One of the most common requests I get from you guys is I need to spend more time taking a look at the various BSD operating systems. The reason I don't spend a lot of time taking a look at BSD is because BSD, all of the BSD operating systems, really are kind of geared toward the server. It's really a server operating system, especially some of the ones you guys constantly recommend me to take a look at, NetBSD, OpenBSD. They're just not desktop operating systems, so they don't interest me. I'm not a sysadmin, and I could never run something like OpenBSD or NetBSD on my main production machine and do this YouTube channel. It's just not possible, right? But the most popular BSD operating system on the planet is FreeBSD, and FreeBSD could be used as a daily desktop driver if you had, I would say, a limited use case, it, it probably wouldn't work for somebody like me. But for some people, they d actually do use FreeBSD as their desktop operating system. And I've never done a FreeBSD installation on camera since starting the YouTube channel. I've installed FreeBSD and played with it a little bit over the years. But today I wanted to run through a FreeBSD installation because they just had a release. Over at distrowatch.com, there is this announcement. FreeBSD just released 11. Point four. So it's a point release. It's a minor release. It's, it's nothing big, but I thought since they just put out this brand new ISO, I would go ahead and download it and run through an installation today inside a virtual machine. So let me switch over to this VM I created. I gave this VM four gigs of RAM and I gave it two threads of my 24 thread Threadripper. People often ask about the specs. The virtual machine I'm using today, this is Vert Manager. So it's using KVM and QEMU. And when you get first get into the boot menu here, you have boot multi-user, which is typically what you want to use. You have boot single user. That's often used for rescuing the system. Uh, you have escape to the loader prompt. You have reboot. You have kernel and configure boot options. I'm just going to choose option one because let's go ahead and get into this and then I will begin the installation. I will say that we're not going to get very far today uh, it, because... Installing FreeBSD is a little like installing something like Arch Linux or Gentoo or, you know, installing a, a desktop environment on top of a server installation. So today I'm going to run through a base installation, then I'm going to install Xorg and maybe a window manager. And, and that's it. So that's as far as I'm going. But I think that's as far as you guys need as far as a tutorial, because um, once you get Xorg installed on the system, you know, the desktop environment and the various graphical programs you want to install, everybody's different anyway. There's no point in me showing you that stuff because you're going to choose different stuff to install than me. But let's at least run through the base install here. So when you first log in, you have the options of install, shell, or live CD. If you choose live CD, you're just going to go straight into a live environment, which I think is just a shell prompt anyway. Then you have a shell prompt option. And then you have the install option, which is already highlighted. That's the one I'm going to choose. And then we have the key map option. By default, the US key map is chosen. If you want to choose something else, you have a list. I am good with the US keyboard though, so I'm just going to hit enter. Now it's going to ask about the host name for this machine. I will call this FreeBSD for the host name. Then we have choose optional system components to install. And you probably want to install some of this stuff. You definitely want 32-bit compatibility libraries. If you install 32-bit programs, you're going to need that stuff. You definitely need the ports tree. So that's getting all your software. You probably want source as well. So I'm going to scroll down to that. And then if I hit uh, the space bar, that will highlight that. I don't need the test suite. And I don't want any of the debugging or documentation either. So I'm going to tab down to OK and hit Enter. And then how would we like to partition your disk? And the great thing about this is this is pretty simple. You have a couple of automatic partitionings, uh, depending on what file system you want to use. The default is UFS. If you wanted to do ZFS, you could do that. You could also choose manual partitioning. So if you need to create some uh, custom partitioning, like maybe you wanted a separate home partition or a separate VAR partition or whatever it is you're trying to do, you could also just get back into the shell and do everything in the shell. Maybe use you know, something like FDisk or something, I don't know. But I'm just going to go with the automatic partitioning and I'm going to use the default file system, which is UFS. 
In this virtual machine, I created a 20 gig virtual hard drive and the installer has detected that and it's asking, do I want to install the FreeBSD operating system to the entire disk, that entire 20 gig disk? And yes, I do. This will erase the disk. Are you sure you want to proceed? So this is basically a warning saying, hey, we're about to format that drive and write to it. Are you sure you want to do this? Because if you hit yes, there's no coming back. So <laughs> I'm going to hit yes. Then select a partition scheme and you have several different options. The two options most people are going to want to use are either GPT or MBR, Master Boot Record. I'm going to choose MBR. And then it's going to tell me exactly what the automatic partitioner is going to do. It is going to create a one gig swap partition. OK, and then the 19 gigs that are left is going to be the root partition. OK, I'm just going to hit enter and the changes will now be written to disk. OK, commit to it. All right, it's installing the base, the kernel, the lib32 packages, the ports packages and the source packages. Because that's what we chose earlier. This may take a minute, so I will pause the video. And we are near the end of this particular installation here. All right, please select a password for system management account. So this is your root password. I'm going to give it a strong and complicated password. All right, please select the network interface. Now, this is probably the most important thing other than if you're partitioning your drives, you can screw that up and make some mistakes. Getting the network to work is also sometimes a little complicated. So it has detected my network interface as VTNet0, so I'm just going to hit OK. Would we like to set up IPv4? Absolutely. Would you like DHCP to configure this? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, saves us some of the work. Now. Would you like to configure IPv6 for this interface? So I'm going to tell you that I typically don't do IPv6. I'm kind of resistant to change in that way. I typically just stick with IPv4. So most of the time, I, for me, I'm going to just choose no. If you wanted to, though, you could choose yes and set up IPv6. Um, and once I hit enter, it has figured out my IPv4 DNS. So let me just hit OK. Select a region. Let's go into America. And then I am in the US. So I'm going to page down toward the bottom of the list. And I'm going to choose the United States. I am in the central time zone. So let's choose that. Does this abbreviation CDT look reasonable? Yeah, that's the central time zone abbreviation. It has correctly chosen today's date for me. So I'm going to go ahead and set the date. Let's set the time. Select the services you would like to be started at boot. It's going to start SSH on boot. That's great. I use SSH all the time. The rest of this stuff, do I really need? Probably not, especially for the VM. So I'm just going to hit OK. Choose system security hardening options. So this is making your system a little more secure, maybe more privacy oriented, maybe so you know certain users on the system can't see the processes your user is running on the system, things like that. I don't need any of this stuff though, at least not in this VM, so I'm just gonna click OK. Would you like to add users to the installed system? Yes, because right now all we have is the root user. I need a home user. I'm gonna call my user DT, full name DT. We don't need UID, just leave it empty. Login group is DT by default, so just hit enter. Login group is DT. Invite DT into other groups. DT definitely needs to at least be a member of this group here, the wheel group, so we can have uh, root privileges if we need that. Login class, just hit enter. Login shell, I'm just going to hit enter. Home directory is slash home slash DT, that's okay. I'm just going to hit enter. Home directory permissions, leave empty. I'm just going to leave all of this empty. Except password. You obviously have to enter a password twice. Lock out the account after creation. No, that's absolutely not what we want to do. Is all of this OK? And I'm just reviewing it. DT user, DT group. He's a member of the DT and the wheel group. We created his directory. His default shell is slash bin slash sh. All that looks good. I'm going to type the word yes and hit enter. Do we want to add another user? No. And we've already gone through everything. Everything in this list, add user, root password, host name, network, time zone, all that is the stuff we've already been through. So if we just hit exit now, we will have installed the base system, I believe. And after hitting enter, I've waited about 30 seconds here and nothing has happened. This is a VM, so it could be acting a little slow, but here in a minute, well, we should you know, get confirmation that we've exited. And then of course the system probably will want to reboot itself. 
And that's exactly what happened. We get this window that pops up. The installation is finished. Before exiting the installer, would you like to open a shell? So do you want to get back into the command line to make any other modifications before we close out the installer? Uh, no, I'm good. Let's just go ahead and reboot. Choose reboot. All right, and we have rebooted our freshly installed FreeBSD 11.4. And I'm just going to hit enter again to boot into the multi-user environment. And this may take a second to boot up. All right, and we come to a login prompt. And we have two options, root and, of course, our DT user. I'm going to log in as root for now because we may want to install some software. And the DT user, even though he is a member of the wheel group, we didn't install sudo or, or anything like that yet. So let me go ahead and log in as root. And if I do a ping google.com, let's see if we have networking. We do. Okay. And that's really the hard part, right? <laughs> Installing FreeBSD and then having networking. You're, you're basically good at this point. We could almost call that an install because that really is the base install. And it's very quick. It took me, I timed it, 14 minutes. And that's me talking through it on camera. 14 minutes to run through the base install. But now that we've done that, you want to see some software installed. You want to at least see me boot into a graphical desktop environment of some kind. So what you need to do is we need to install software. You need to do a PKG install XORG. And do you want to fetch and install uh, the package management system? Yes. So this may take some time here. And once this gets PKG on the system and, you know, syncs everything and then starts pulling down XORG. XORG is massive. You know, there's a couple hundred packages, I think, that it needs to install for the X11 display server. That's why I'm not going to do a full desktop environment. I'm not going to install a web browser or anything like that. I, the only thing I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to go ahead and install XORG and I'm going to throw some small window manager. I'll probably pick open box because it doesn't have very many dependencies. And then I'm going to run start X just to, you know, get into a graphical environment just to show you guys that, that we did that. Matter of fact, I, I don't even need to do open box. I could just do the default XORG window manager, which is TWM. It's going to be installed as part of this package, but I'll install open box because nobody's going to use TWM anyway. And this is going to take a few minutes to fetch all the packages. And I'm going to step away for a second and grab a cup of coffee. And I stepped away for about four or five minutes, brewed some coffee, came back. Uh, the mirrors here are kind of slow. Uh, FreeBSD, I believe, does mirrors based on geolocation. So it should choose the mirrors that are closest to you. Because I'm doing this in a VM, though, it may have chosen a mirror that's not that close to me. I don't know what's going on here. You can see that the speeds are not very fast, though. Right now it's down to... 294, 409 kilobytes a second, up to 600 kilobytes a second. Sometimes it gets up to a meg a second, but sometimes it drops down to less than 100 kilobytes a second. So it's, it's varying, but, you know, not crazy fast speeds. All right, and it has finished installing XORG. That took some time. That took a good 15 minutes or so. And that's strange. That, that mainly was because of the slow mirror. And then once you had, had the packages actually downloaded, then they extracted in a couple of minutes uh, because we were using the PKG install. It's They're, they're already pre-compiled, so it didn't have to, to build anything from source. But it was really the slow mirror that, that kind of slowed us down there. So let's do another PKG install because other than XORG, we need a window manager. I'm going to do open box. And again, because of the slow mirror, I'm going to choose things that I know are kind of small. So let's install open box. I'm going to need a text editor on the system. So let's go ahead and install Vim. A web browser I can do without for purposes of this video because it may take a while to download <laughs> a big bloated proper web browser like Firefox. So let's do open box, Vim, Xterm, in case Xterm is not on the system. It probably already was part of the Xorg download though. All right, and it's going to have to download 61 packages. Again, that's going to take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video. All right, it finally finished downloading all the packages for OpenBox and Vim, and it's extracting those pre-compiled binaries. Just a couple of more seconds here, and we should be done. All right, and we're back at the prompt. And from here, well, I mean, from here, I could just do a start X, since now we have XORG, we have a window manager, we have a text editor. So if I just do start X, we are in 
Uh, Tom's window manager. This is TWM. This is the built-in window manager for the X11 window system. And it's very weird, very strange. You're not going to want to use Tom's window manager. It's uh, nobody <laughs> wants to use Tom's window manager. So uh, I installed OpenBox, remember? So I'm going to kill all TWM. And then I'm going to do OpenBox dash dash replace. <laughs> and now we are running OpenBox. If I right click, you know, this is the standard OpenBox window manager. Of course, Xterm was installed. Uh, I, I don't think I installed it when I did the package install Xterm. I think it was actually part of the Xorg uh, install anyway. So this is as far as I'm going to go here today, guys. From here, you know, where you go from here is up to you. You install your own window manager or desktop environment. You may want to install a uh, login manager like light dm or something like that these windows are very bright <laughs> blinding white these uh x terms here i can't even get to the top of that one i'm just gonna have to type the word exit <laughs> and of course that was the root window there that i typed exit at but that's fine we got back to the prompt so from there, all I would need to do, or all you guys would need to do, is install your favorite desktop environment or window manager. Install a login manager like LightDM or whatever it is you want to use. Install you know, a panel or a dock, uh, something to set your wallpaper like Nitrogen or FEH. Install a network manager, volume icon, clipboard manager, you know, things like that. Uh, of course, you guys that want to install a full desktop environment like GNOME or KDE Plasma have this very easy because when you install GNOME or you install Plasma, you know, it's a full desktop environment, which means you get your window manager and login manager and clipboard manager and network manager and all that just built in. You don't have to worry about installing a dozen different things. But for people like me that prefer window manager only, I like picking and choosing which particular components I want to use, you know, for each task. So that was just a very quick overview of the installation process for FreeBSD. It's actually not complicated at all, and it's extremely quick. I mean, installing the base package of FreeBSD seriously takes about 10 minutes. Installing and configuring FreeBSD is no more difficult than installing something like Arch Linux, and I know most of you guys have probably played with Arch at some time or another. So uh, give it a try. If you want to, do what I just did. Give it a spin in a VM, and if you like what you see in the VM, throw it on a test machine or an extra drive if you have one laying around. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I need to thank Michael, Gabe, Haplo, Nate, Corbinian, Mitchell, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Omri, Paul, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. Without these guys, we wouldn't have done this quick installation of FreeBSD. It wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all of these ladies and gentlemen. Each and every one of these names you see on the screen, this is all my supporters over on Patreon because this show is sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, you'll find DT over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.